following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. This is John Logan, and it's Wednesday morning there in the States, I do believe. And uh, I'm back finally at a desk here in Asia where I can get back to the the regimen of what we used to do here <laughs> every day before I left. That was about almost a week ago. Uh, been, a, been a long trip and uh, glad to be settled back in. Lots happened. Oof. Had some S&P rallies here finally up the bottom. But let's take a look at that real quick as we get started. This is our daily. This is the June contract. And this is this 2068.75 area uh, that we almost closed above on Monday. And let's just give some prices there. Reached a high of 2074. Kind of started crowding it a little bit, which was a little concerning, and now we've just come off of again. Never have had a close above that area. This is our daily on the S&Ps. All right, now let's try to start putting all this together. Uh, we're going to take a look at some breadth, but let's just give some numbers there. That's our daily numbers. This is our pre-market. It's kind of nice when you have these 240s line up very similar with the dailies. That's a that's a real good situation. Most of the time, we've come up. We compressed against this. This was um, again the 240 minute time span coupled with the daily unfair highs at 2068, 2069, 2070 is this 240. So you can get all this information in the scanner. We're going to talk about that. We're going to pull in the breadth in just a little bit here. And uh, we're going to take a look at the speedometers in just a bit. But let's take a look at the NASDAQ really quick. Just kind of get back in the swimming here. Here's the situation on the NASDAQ. This is the daily situation. Very similar situation. As far as inflection points, 43.89. This is the June contract on the NASDAQ. Daily unfair highs. 240s trading above. Nasdaq's obviously been on a relative strength standpoint, a little bit stronger than the S&Ps. Going to keep that in mind always. There's probably better shorts out there. If you're looking at trades between the Dow and the S&P, let's take a look at. We don't look at this that often, but let's just take a look at the Dow. This is the June contract on the Dow. Here's the weekly situation on the Dow. It's kind of hung in there with the latest new profile here. Here's the situation on the daily, very similar to the S&Ps and the NASDAQ coming off those daily unfair high inflection points. Got some Fed speak today. And let's take a look at, I'm sorry, I went past that. Let's take a look at the dollar really, really quick. This is the June contract. As you can see on a long-term basis, the weekly were well above unfair highs, but guess what, folks? Finally, finally have a new profile. Okay, if you guys can see that, and we had an indication that we're going to have a supply area yesterday, finally had a little bit of a pullback. Today is the 18th. Actually, let me see. I'm sorry, I'm mixed up here. But as we showed previous day, we had that orange bar attempting to appear in the new profile. As we had a close into that, we have a new profile now locked in and won't change. So the support on the dollar now, all that being said, 99.23 rounded off on the bottom and 179 up top. What does that mean? That means that right now we're right in the middle of a fair auction. If you're trading the dollar, this is our daily time frame here. If you're trading the dollar, on an intermediate time level, you probably want to sit tight and just wait. We may have pullbacks into 99.23. We don't have to, but if we do, that could be considered a good buy point. Uh, if the train leaves and we're not on it, so be it. But as a trader, we want to wait until the market kind of comes to us. 
be patient. Here's the shorter term time frames. On the shorter term support areas for the dollar, we've already met that this morning, 99.74. Still in the middle of a fair auction on this one too. New breakouts above 120 on the dollar and pullbacks into 99.23. Okay. Take a look at the euro, just to take a look at this as far as sheer technicals go. The gift that keeps on giving. But guess what? New profile, first time. And I'm going to point this out here just to kind of give you an idea how cool this is. First time since January that we've had a new profile appear here on the Euro. This is good news for traders. We've got a chance to have some new inflection points to key off of on an intermediate time frame, which is my favorite inflection points to key off of. And right now, we're right in the middle of a fair auction. We can't really do anything. The, the short trade in the intermediate is kind of – could be considered over for just a little bit here. Rallies up into 107 – excuse me, 107 – can't speak today. 174, 175, that area are to be sold. So letting the market come to you, that would be the – you know, the optimum sell point breakouts also have to be sold below 105.16. Okay, so we're looking at breakouts below 105.16 and resistance selling, hoping this thing comes up to 107.46. Now, if you've been in this trade, um, again, that scanner told you yesterday that we more than likely might need to be scaling out of an intermediate trade down. Uh, and now that a new profile appears, what does that mean? That means a new demand area. We've got to take a look at that and sit tight on an intermediate level. On a very long-term level, the short trade is still on. But for traders, uh, this is something we got to pay attention to because we could have a little bit of a snapback rally. But that would be cool because 107.46 would be that selling point. Got a lot of guys who are doing business with the British pound relative to the dollar that I know. Here's the situation of the pound. It's finally starting to follow suit with the euro. It's kind of hung in there, hung in there, hung in there. And then when we had the breakdown below 152.21, that was the close below. Didn't even get a retest of that. But uh, now you can see where we're headed here. That was uh, the Maginot line for the British pound. And this thing could head a lot lower. Uh, in similar fashion, it was closing below some of these weekly situations, so it's a kind of a dual time frame lineup there. Let's go down, down the usual suspect list here. Let's take a look at uh, the Japanese yen. Let's get a bearing on what's going on here. There's that 120.43 area, the big support area for the yen. And that 120.43 now, it's really, really cool because we've got a daily profile where that unfair low on the daily is 120.49. So you've got, you know, you hope that we pull back on the end out of that area for buy points. That would be a retest of that uh, breakout as we had broken above weekly on fair highs. So right now, the end, in my opinion, is a little bit of a sit tight situation unless we start having daily closes above 121.77 or pullbacks into 120.43.49. Okay. Some people trying to get hold of me here. All right. That's the situation on the end. Aussie dollar, we're going to give a couple of numbers there. And as we look at the weekly on this, had the breakout closed below, go back and retest. We've already talked about, you know, how these breaking down below profiles and the powerful trades to go back and retest. That retest this week already has been as high as 76, 79, 76, let's call it 80. Those weekly unfair lows are 76.93. All right, so with a little bit of noise factor, had that close below, go back and retest. These weekly numbers are very powerful. And now what do you do? So we've come down into the bottom of the profile. I liked how this is acting. I like the long-term leverage on the short side, and I love selling the breakouts now below 75.91. All right, so the short trip. So the good news is, is I think we've eliminated the long trade on this particular product. So we're looking for rallies up into resistance areas or breakdown selling points below at this stage, 75.91 on the Aussie dollar.
All right, let's cover a couple more things that we need to get out of the way here. Let's take a look at gold. This is our April contract. If anybody wants me to trans that translate that into the uh, the May contract, let me know. Or the next contract over, excuse me. Here's the weekly on gold. Talked about staying away from this for quite a few reasons, technical reasons. Um, the dollars obviously pulled back just a tad here. Uh, gold doesn't seem to pay attention to that. So let's, you know, we've talked about staying away from this on the long side, just waiting, waiting, waiting patiently. Right now we're still in that waiting game. I'm not a big fan of going short this product, uh, 1152.70 bottom of the box and if we break above there and close above it then I'd feel somewhat okay trading up into 1171 and a half but right now it's still a uh, stay away from trade in my opinion right now in gold had a lot of emails about that haven't been able to respond to it let's take a look at silver really quick in the May contract um, you know 1587 was you know a big number for me Closed below, we came back and retested it actually, closed below last week, retested it this week, and that's uh, that's somewhat bearish. I was I was kind of a big fan of, of this thing hanging in there, but again, when we started crossing the borders, and especially a weekly close below, 1587 is that number, and we had a kind of a uh, 1576 retrace back up into there, never quite reached it, but uh, that's the way that works. Uh, so the long-term trend on silver right now is down. We're trading below weekly profiles. You do have a chance to nibble here, as was seen yesterday, around this daily unfair low, around 1537. This is not the type of action you want to see. It kind of want, you know, you want to see price action get away from these inflection points, it's kind of coming back down into it again. So uh, not a big fan of, of doing anything with silver until we get back above 1587. And right now this... This is just a new profile below that weekly number. And um, again, that's going to be the most powerful thing to clear this daily unfair high and the weekly unfair low. Just get, get, start having some technical damage, at least on the intermediate. And we don't see that happening right now. And uh, sad to say for silver longs, that's just the way this works. And uh, it might not be a bad idea to sit tight on silver. Wait for those borders to be breached. All right, when we come back, we're going to take a look at crude oil. XLE plus fruit stocks and uh, hang in there. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 5% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We haven't looked at. Uh, some of the things that we normally look at, yeah, I was just trying to just had so many emails about, you know, the, the usual suspects, the generics that we look at every day. Just want to kind of cover those really quick and get some things on people's radar screens. We've obviously got some some news coming out today. I think <laughs> it, it could be impacting, to say the least. That's uh, I think that's going to be true. And, you know, the Fed, they, God, you know, again, they're – this is really sad, um, in my opinion, just to digress a little bit here, that this lady or this, these folks are hinging off, you know, decimal, you know, thousands, out to the thousands place, decimal places to, on one report to hang their hat that, oh, my God, we can't raise rates now and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it, you know, it's just, it's sad. Um, yeah, I hear you, Jay. Um, it's you know that the Fed's the Fed's supposed to have a long term view, and they're supposed to do what's best for the for the you know, for the folks in the economy, and they're not supposed to, you know, I don't know. It's just turned into uh, a whole different scenario, and uh, this, you know, I'm sure Tom and some other folks that are on the TFN network have said that this is more than likely could end really really ugly um they need to do what they need to do um for the betterment of of all and not just to satisfy a couple of folks here um and that means the betterment of all not everybody's who's uh got a share in the stock market right now and if it ticks down there you know and uh spark some comments there all right guys that being said we're going to take a look at uh some of the breadth information on the S&Ps in just a second, try to digest, you know, where's the leverage on that, but let's just go right into the 10-year, and uh, we're looking at the June contract, 
and here we go. You know, I've, you know, this announcement today, again, I'm a kind of a bigger fan of trading the, the reactions to the action. Um, this thing could go either way. And looking at the long-term view, obviously 127.11 is that, you know, big area to be kind of long above or short below. But recently we did start having some technical damage on the daily and on the weekly, actually, in the 10-year and the 30-year. And then we, you know, I talked about, you know, this action of the sell-off in the stock market really, you know, in the past times, recent times, that would have exploded these treasuries, you know. Um, right now, you know, not uh, not the same reaction. So it's it's such a mixed bag right now, especially right before this lady's, you know, runs her yapper again. We're going to try to probably just sit tight is, is my take on it. But remember, these 127.11 uh, is the weekly big number. Um, we're kind of in the middle of the fair auction right here on the daily too. So the shorter term leverage points, 128.02, these are the 10 year numbers and 126.28 down below. Those are gonna be the, you know, if we, just make sure, hold on. Sorry, 126.28 down below, I was reading that wrong. So what does that all mean? You got 127.11 in the interim. Right now, this is the way I'm reading this. All right, so going back into the 10-year daily, breakouts above 128.01.02 are going to kind of confirm that we've gotten back in the weekly fair auction and we've actually started moving in a technically damaging way back up into the kind of the long view on the daily. And, uh, you know, she could come out and say some very positive things for treasuries. You know, I mean, that. I think uh, they've everybody's so braced for a gentle, hey, we are going to take the patient statement out of. I mean, my God, you know. I mean, but uh, if she says if she says anything different than that, um, you know, just watch out because that's kind of baked in the cake, seemingly, and that uh, this is where this is where the markets determine the fair prices of uh, of the tenure are right now. So, so what do you do? So let's just. To kind of revisit this. Any breakouts and closes, especially above 128.02, are going to have to really, really be taken as we may start edging up again. Um, any closes back down below that DMZ between 120, and this is for longer term views here, between 126.28 and that 127.11 area, uh, that's, that's going to have to be seriously paid attention to. We're going to go into PLT in just a second. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. You know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powerful Powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We're going to hit the, before we get into the 30 year, we're going to take a look at the TLT, the <laughs> the 20 year Lehman no used to be called that here's the daily situation 127.63 these are our daily profiles that's the unfair highs we're probably trading 129 starting to show some technical damage on the upside but you got a bigger border to cross here and that's literally right around 129.16 so daily kind of technical damage has started on the upside and, and a you know, a weekly close. I hate to just be so long term on this, um, but it's it's just yeah, looking a little similar to the ten year we just looked at as far as the weekly situation going on. Uh, we're trading right now as of the time of this report. Let me just make sure one twenty nine eighty two. Now this weekly doesn't have that incorporated into it the way e signal does their charts, um, and we're looking at e signal charts right now is. Uh, you know, they pre-market's a little rough on, on some of these longer-term bar charts, so that's where we're at. Pre-market, we're trading 129 and some change. Uh, let me just make sure that's true. Yeah, 129.82. So we've crossed the board on the weekly. A weekly close will be super important here, and I hate to be, hey, let's wait till Friday and see what happens to trade the TLT. Don't mean to be like that, but that's going to solidify. Now, obviously, you can... <clears throat> Get ahead of the uh, of that situation anytime you'd like, but a close up here above this 129 is going to be pretty powerful for this to possibly use that as a lever to move higher. 
Um, why am I saying that? Because that would kind of coincide with some of the 10 year situations that we just talked about. Uh, the daily again, 127.63. We got a, and again, this is not incorporating pre market 129.82 here. Um, so I've, I've thrown a lot of numbers out there and what if scenarios. So what do you, what's the ball, what's the bottom line? Um, the bottom line is, <laughs> again, I hate to be this way, but sitting tight and waiting for that, uh, Fed speak is going to be um, probably the most appropriate thing. You know, she, she could she could drive these things you know 15 ways to Sunday in different directions by what she says. So, uh, you know, again, those are the inflection points to pay attention to. And you know, I've been forever pretty much buy support on bonds and bonds and buy breakouts on bonds. Um, started seeing this a little differently um, by some of the reactions of the notes and bonds in general to the, the way the market was acting lately. And, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag right now. I mean, just again, if you're going to day trade, um, obviously, I don't think you need to roll the dice too hard before she speaks. That's the bottom line on that. Um, thanks. It's good to be back here uh, in front of you guys. Uh, somebody in the den saying something. Okay, here's the 30 year, a little bit different situation, a little bit more volatile. 159.30 is that big number on the daily. And here's our situation on the weekly. Don't have enough to form a new profile here, so we got to stay away from that. We've talked a lot about why we're not using the continuous on these, uh, but let's just look at the daily. This is the support area, 159.30, and we're trading well above there now, 162.04 real time on the June contract. Uh, and same situation, here's the 240 powering up here's the short-term inflection points if you need to know these for right now 161 24 and 160 24 down below so uh that's the short-term 240s what, what is this thing supposed to do again i think it's a wait and see you know i would take a hard look at pulling you know if you got access to this or a demo of it I would take a hard look at just paying attention to these inflection points on these treasuries if you're going to trade them for that announcement just kind of kind of watching how this acts this is a you know real-time updating situation these cells are going to tell you some things as as uh as some of this information comes to light let's go back to the s and P's just for a second before we get into crude oil i just want to you know revisit these speedometers up top and kind of look at the action um, here's the weekly. The weeklies never have yet to cross over. I'm just going to kind of show you that. There's a situation there. Um, here's the daily situation. We had this you know had had the cross crossovers that started to happen around March between March 3rd and March 5th on the negative side. So between March 3rd and March 5th, that started to happen stay negative stay negative and then we kind of crossed over to positive between the 15th and the 16th so let's and now we're still positive uh so let's take a look at that let's go back to the s p's So there's that fifth and sixth area between the fifth and the sixth. We started crossing the borders on the on the daily, and the uh, the sell off, and then the you know the breadth that turned in that time area, and uh, then we started. Let's just make sure I'm right on this. Hold on. Six cents. There's the 15th, there's the 16th. So that breath situation changed between that and that back to positive. But, um, you know, we've got some headwinds here on the S&Ps, namely 20, 68, 69. But again, I think this is all a wait and see until after 2 o'clock this afternoon. A lot of times you'll have, you get, if you guys have traded these announcements, you'll have uh, some knee jerks and then, you know, everything winds out the right way. Then you'll have the pretty much correct move relative to the wrong move early that's a lot of times what will happen as soon as uh, all the information has been digested then you you know give it a little bit you'll you'll start seeing it either reverse and go go back another way or just uh consolidate and move in the same direction we see here okay 
So I just hit me up. Okay, let's get into crude oil really, really quick. Okay, here's the April contract. All right, this is something before I left, we had talked about we need to get back above 50, 50.13. Um, I'm trying to think of the date that I left. Let me see here. Tenth. It was right in here. But we talked about, you know, waiting. We, we can't really get back long crude oil until we get back above 50. 13 and that never happened so therefore it wasn't a good opportunity to get along we also talked about on the weekly not really picking a battle down here on the 45 91 46 area uh, why because when we get down to these most recent lows things on our lows want to go lower and that would not be the type of action we want to see in crude oil so that was kind of a a wait and see game i was a little bit more bullish than bearish on crude oil if you guys watch this show you know that um that didn't work out we never got back above that 50 13 area and we talked about not ahead of time not picking a battle on the long side at 45.91 so this has been you know obviously six or seven actually what has that been uh seven or eight seven or eight dollar a barrel down moving crude oil that i did not participate in um, on the short side, but the good news is, I guess if you could look at it one way, is that we never got really seriously long um, in the midst of this because there wasn't any real valid reasons if you just take into consideration what I just talked about. So, you know, how has this affected a couple of other things? Let's take a look now at the 240s. That was, you know, the situation there. Let's take a look at the XLE because, you know, this was something on a relative strength standpoint that we were talking about was trying to hang in there. Here's the long term. Uh, I still love the way this is acting. It's just you got to find your battles, pick your battles, and put the stops in. Um, you know, this is again not making new lows. You got 72.63 sitting down here now. But you know, if you were in this, we had also talked about. You know, at the same time, crude oil needed to get back above 50.13. The XLE to really get long again on the on the intermediate trade had to get back above this 78 and 70 78.81 that didn't happen either but now we've got a new profile attempting to appear down here and i like this actually you got 74.29 and 74.18 from the past that's that weekly unfair low i actually like trading this now again from the long side with stops below 74 okay initial targets 76.19 that's not far off let me just say we're trading pre-market 74.95 but again i like this trade to accumulate here and take a shot for this to retrace back up into at least that 78.81 area that's man, what is that three four dollars um and i like that on a relative strength scale relative to crude oil crude oil could keep sailing south um but again you know where to put your stops on the xle to play that relative strength game below 74. Let's take a look at Exxon Mobil really quick while we're looking at these uh, crude related situations. This is one we talked about from a relative strength standpoint. This was probably not the one to buy. Um, and we had that close blow and that definitely solidified that. But uh, this is just a good little primer on, you know, relative strength trading and, and sometimes not picking battles at major infl inflection points. Okay. We got to take a look at a couple of usual suspects. Apple, you know, just just an enormous amount of emails. I think half the country's along this thing. Um, so, you know, with the bouncing of the market recently, we were provided some decent inflection points, 122.42 to wait patiently. And we got that orange bar attempting to appear and then the new profile and then a chance to pick a battle there. And uh, looking back in time, that's easy to see, but this was in force when this happened and now we're in the middle of a fair auction again i think uh you know is what's and there's the weekly too so that 122.24 on the weekly i forgot to mention that combined with 122.42 that dmz down there was your collection area for apple and uh what do you do now so here's the weekly targets above 130.76 right in the middle of a fair auction here on the weekly and pretty much in the middle of a fair auction on the daily so no leverage here if you're long i think you just put maybe a trailing stop in 
that's basically every email that I get. Everybody is long. I, I really think shorting this is could be a disaster. So I, you know, I don't think that being long or out of the market on this is that's it's better than being short Apple. It's uh, oof. and why? Why do I take that stance? Because of this long term view hasn't broken down technically. In a long time, and that means breaking down below weekly profiles. So you've got to be looking for long opportunities on this still. And you know I like to short things, staying away from that one. <laughs> Let's take a look at the XLF. All right, this one's. Can I say pissing me off on the on the network here? Twenty four forty nine. I mean, I, you know, I'm a big fan of of. Yeah, sorry about that, Al. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at this. I've been a big fan of trying to short against this twenty four forty seven. Uh, you know, that was coupled with some daily information twenty four forty nine. Well, that kind of broke my heart. Had the close above on the daily. You, then you, you know, we've kind of rattled around here yesterday. But again, staying above, it's almost. And I hate to say this, this thing almost now seems like it's sitting on the launching pad, and you know, it's almost. In anticipation, a rate hike would do these guys major, major justice as far as the yield curve changing. But, you know, just again, I think it's a stay away from the JPs and the, the Goldman Sachs of the world and just kind of sit tight on these uh, and just wait till, till that lady finishes saying things that uh, only she can say. So hate that that happened really really was disturbing to me but you know th this is the good thing about what we use every day is it tells you it's probably not okay to be in the short water now and don't put your hopes and dreams into something especially what somebody might need to say to make this you know let the technicals kind of stop you out of situations and this may be considered noise based on your appetite for risk but i don't like the way this is looking now do not like it And sorry about that. <laughs> here we go. Let's go back into the S&Ps here really quick. Some guys joined the show late, and I'm getting a couple of emails about that. Um, you know, ahead of these, ahead of this lady speaking, remember 2068, 2069, 2070. There is some resistance there. You know, if you're, tra if you're day trading during the day of a Fed announcement, there's going to be a lot of adjusting positions. Um, you know, be prepared for some winding around action with these things uh that's where those are at gave those inflection points all right when we come back we're going to cover cover a couple of stocks to be aware of based on what the scanner's saying and we'll be right back Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. As this this one-of-a-kind winter comes to a close and spring approaches, it only seems fitting that now is the perfect time for a spring Tiger Dollar sale. For this week only, we're doubling the bonus that we give when you purchase any amount of Tiger Dollars. Normally, we offer a 10, 15, or 20% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars, but for this week only, we're doubling our special offers and you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. This is one of our best Tiger Dollar sales of the year and won't be around for long. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN product or service and provide a great way to lock in added value on your subscriptions. Tiger Dollars never expire, so whether you're a current subscriber or plan on subscribing at one point in the future, take advantage of this spring Tiger Dollar sale this week only and get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. This sale ends Sunday night, so don't miss out. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Get your Tiger Dollars today and lock in your bonus before this sale passes you by. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using headed recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. My scanner's actually <clears throat> having a little issue here because of the line that I'm on right now, so I can't really use that. Um, I hope you guys are looking at the tournament starting tomorrow. And Chesapeake Bay, Virginia. I don't know if these guys, are these guys going to do it or not? I mean, I'm, I'm a little shaky on Virginia right now in UVA. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I tell you what, I love their style of play, but uh, man, Starting to starting to feel like they they're they're not having the the best momentum here going into the tournament. Um, I hope NC State can pull it out. That's probably yeah. I know I know Jay. I tell you what, I love the way they play though. That is old school, good coaching right there, and I gotta admire that. Let's take a look at IBM. I cannot get uh, my scanners starting up. Get get going here. A little too late. I'd like to see Virginia win, put it that way. I mean, I love the style of play. Here we go, IBM. All right, talked about that 160-26 area. Oh, I got a, I got a lot riding on that Duke game. And uh, the Notre Dame, yeah, just, we'll talk about that. Um, here's the situation on IBM. Uh, targets down below, in my opinion, still are. There's that 152.28. Did we get there last week? This is the weekly. While I was out, 
152.28. That's pretty close. And the reason we were looking at this from the short side is we got that retrace back into 160.55 on the weekly, and that was coupled with 160.26. So, you know, how, you know that's that's been a real decent situation. Um, and we haven't bounced that significant. So I get a lot of emails about this. There's a lot... <laughs> And I'm not laughing. I'm sorry. There's a, there's a lot of people out there with this literally sitting in their portfolio still, and they're you know the, the constant thing that I say if, is if you're a trader, um, there's going to be some trading opportunities in it. Just pay attention to these inflection points, namely the weekly. These guys are some of the people that send me these are not the, the most active traders, but from a long term investment standpoint, this is what you have to remember with IBM. This is the flat out total surrounding comments of this thing it was the only dow stock down in 2013 it sucked last year and if you look at this thing the way it's been acting relative to the market it still is bad all right so anything can happen but this this company's got a hell of a hill to climb and uh from an investment standpoint i think you've got better opportunities remember this thing more than likely is not on sale okay all right, let's go back right before the announcement. Let's just head back into treasuries really quick. Let's just see how they're acting. I, I look at the 10-year a lot more than the 30-year because uh, the 30 years can move violently. 127.11, we're getting back above that weekly and clearing that 128 and 102 is going to be super important. It seems like we continue to edge up here. Um, remember, that's going to be the big area to get back above and close above on the daily to start looking at the 10-year at all from a long standpoint. Okay. We're going to revisit TLT just to kind of re rehash some numbers here. Pre-market, we're at 129.74. There's nothing to really grab onto on the daily numbers here's the 240s guys thanks get back in the rhythm over here so we'll pick it back up again tomorrow we'll be right we'll, steve rose is next Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.